I'd love to introduce to you our Dean of Rackham Graduate School, Michael Solomon. Mike? Thanks very much, Chris. Hi. Hello, <laughs> welcome, welcome everyone to this. Uh, I'm Mike Solomon, I'm Dean of the Graduate School and on behalf of the University of Michigan, it's really my pleasure to welcome all of you to this event. Um, I'll, I just have a few open remarks and, and I'll be with, with you for the first part until you go into your breakout sessions. And I'm really hoping that you uh, enjoy uh, your conversations with, with each other. You know, I was um, thinking that uh, when, we, when I joined this event last year, I had a wonderful time at, uh, at MSU and uh, we, we promised to host you in uh, Rackham Graduate School. And I'm sorry if we're unable to deliver on that, but we <laughs> uh, community at this moment is uh, important through whatever mechanism we can generate it through it, uh, generate it. So really delighted to welcome you all uh, virtually here today. And uh, we really um, not only hope, but expect that uh, we will have you into uh, all to, to join us into the graduate school at some, some later point. Um, as we begin, I just I would like to acknowledge uh, um, uh, our our friends from MSU, um, certainly all the Gupta Value Scholars, and as well as uh, Jennifer Bertram, um, the Senior Development Officer at MSU, and uh, Doug Estri, um, the Emeritus Social uh, Associate Provost for Undergrad Ed, and Dean of the Undergraduate Studies at MSU. Welcome to both of you and to everybody that um, made the virtual trip down uh, from Lansing today. Um, I also would really like to thank uh, Margaret and Shashi Gupta. It's a nice, wonderful to see you again and your guests as well. It's, it's wonderful to see you virtually as well. Hello. Um, you know, the, uh, as, as, as everybody on this call knows, I think we're just really delighted to be um, a participant in the Gupta Value Scholars Program that uh, um, involves MSU, Northern Virginia Community College, and, and us here. Um, at the uh, at the University of Michigan. Margaret is a Rackham alum, and we're very proud of that, having received her <laughs> master's degree in political science. And uh, Shashi earned his MBA and PhD from MSU. And their commitment to social justice, uh, have the creation of the Gupta Family Foundation, which funds initiatives all over the world in addition to these scholarships is really an, an inspiration for us all. You know, this is the third year that uh, Rackham has been able to participate um, in the Gupta Value Scholars. And today, to date, um, it's been just a wonderfully broad set of, of scholars uh, from Michigan, from public policy, higher education, choreography, philosophy, just represents the wonderful breadth of, of disciplines um, that uh, in, in academia and, and higher education. Um, at MSU, you know, the program has been going for uh, uh, quite a few years, and I'm really looking forward to learning more um, about your scholars who have, who have joined us today. You know, as I mentioned, it's really a pleasure uh, for us to come together today. Earlier in the summer, um, the Rackham staff got together in a retreat, and we sat down to try to develop just a simple model about how we are gonna be supporting um, graduate students uh, this year since that's what the Rackham is about. Um, we're, we're, we're the college that um, really holds all the masters and, uh, and doctoral degrees at the University of Michigan. And, uh, and we came up with a triangle. So uh, it's, it involves uh, academic support as one leg, uh, mental health and wellness as a second leg and community as a third leg. And uh, when I look, um, you know, we're halfway through the fall term and I think it's fair to say that um, community has really been one of the toughest legs for us uh, in, this, in this triangle. And, and part of it is that I think it affects all the others. Uh, um, uh, um, this lacking community can really impact academics and well-being. And so I think, uh, you know, my personal belief is that events like these are really important at this critical moment. We should be trying to find community um, everywhere that we can uh, virtually uh, you know, with face coverings in person and in a socially distanced way outside, if we can, with all those constraints. But um, every way that we can come together just to me seems enormously important at this moment. And we're, we've, we've done some things in the fall and we're gonna be trying to do additional things in the, in the winter term. You know, I know I, I, I can't, I think, give this, uh, uh, be here without acknowledging that there's a, there's a game this weekend and that does represent our rivalry. You know, football isn't really top of mind in the graduate school, but I know we're joined by, that's not entirely, uh, you know, uniform, um, but we're also joined by our MSU uh, uh, scholars as well. Um, so that is a form of rivalry, but I, but I really wanted to take this moment to just emphasize our shared community. You know, we are all at institutions that have each uh, strived in their own way uh, to, to best educate students in this very challenging uh, fall term. 
Uh, we're in a state that is struggling to hang together to overcome the pandemic. And, uh, and we're all coming up on an election in which those who are eligible to vote can exercise that privilege and responsibility. And we are further connected uh, through, the, through the Group to Value Scholarship, uh, Scholars Program uh, and this commitment to the values of integrity, human dignity, and excellence. Um, I wanted to take just a brief moment to, to thank our Rackham Scholars. Um, I'll just introduce them briefly. You'll have the opportunity to, to, to be um, chatting later. Uh, Angelo Perone, PhD candidate in social work and uh, psychology. Um, Amani Meat Ankamenra Amen, who is an MFA candidate in the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. And Xiaoxi Zhang, PhD candidate in comparative literature. Um, I want to congrat congratulate you all for having received the Gupta Values Award this year. I know this is a, just a very busy time, and so I thank you for, for, for joining us tonight. So uh, that, those, that concludes my remarks of welcome. I, I now would like to uh, turn it over to, um, to Dr. Gupta to offer some remarks. Um, really and uh, Shashi, please, please uh, welcome, and, and we would love Can to hear from you. So there is another connection with uh, oh, the yes. University of Michigan. John and Karen's daughter, Carolyn, is a professor there. I'll let him say a word about yeah, that. She's a professor in nuclear, I think it's nuclear something. I'm not sure. If I told you what it was, I'd have to kill you. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she, she's, yeah. Sounds what like nuclear engineering. Sounds like nuclear engineering. That's what it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <Last name. Korean. laughs> and you got it. That was it. Yeah. Her name's Carolyn Carans, and uh, I think she just became a professor about, professor about two years ago. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's a wonderful cool. connection as well. I'm an engineering cool. faculty member, so I can, I can actually, those, those words come right off my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, thank you, Mike, for the introduction. Uh, I'll say a few words, and then I'd like Doug Eastry to also uh, share his thoughts with us. So I thought I'll take this moment to give some background on the foundation and the Gupta, Gupta Values Scholars in particular for the benefit of everyone who's new to the program in terms of the recipients. So I can't see you all, I wish I could, but, but my screen is limited, so I can't see all 29 participants. In the past, we've, been, we've met in person and that's been absolutely special. So we, are, we missed you this April and we're missing you now. Uh, it's much better to be in person, but like Mike said, we, we have to find community any which way we can, especially these days. So just a little bit of history. Uh, Margaret and I started our company Apex, I think about 32 years ago. Yeah, 32 years ago. Wow, that's a long time. And um, the interesting thing about our company is that we decided that we are going to really do a social experiment. Okay. Most companies are formed to make as much money as they can. We thought we would create a company which was uh, built on a set of core values. And we will pursue those values and hope in the process to make money as well. So those three values were integrity, which is doing the right thing for the right reasons. And in, in, the, in terms of the business, it translates into uh, following a conviction that business should be a force for good. It shouldn't become a force for greed. So that is what we committed to on integrity. Then human dignity, we felt that in every interaction, one should conduct themselves in such a way that it enhances the integrity of the other party. And this is especially true when there is an inequality in the power. And our feeling is that the stronger we get, the more gentle we should become, and the more we should you know, reach out a hand to help those who are less fortunate than us. And the last piece was, is excellence. And the idea was based on something my mother used to say, and that is if every day, you pursue excellence. Whatever you do, you do it to the best of your ability. Then you are going to be a contented human being, whether you make millions or not, but every day pursuing excellence will guarantee you a level of contentment 
which is what we all strive for. Now, when we started this, so what happened is our business became pretty successful. So obviously we started thinking and, you know, we spread this culture over several thousand people, okay? It was, we had about, at one point, about 6,000 employees around the world. And this was the message. These were the three concepts that I always talked about whenever I talked to the staff. And it took us quite a bit of effort to really uh, build in this culture in the DNA of the company. We would do unusual things like we used to invite young people from abroad, young staffers to come to America so that they could deal with our customers and understand the customer's expectations. So, you know, people from India are quite um, used to hierarchy. So what I would do is I would go pick them up at the airport. And that itself used to be a shock. It's like, oh my God, why is the CEO come to pick me up? And then I would reach down and pick up their bags. And that would just blow their minds. The point I was trying to make through these kind of things was that, you know, uh, bringing that very, very American value, which is also an Indian value, but it's an American value that we are all born equal. And so I used to say, just making the football analogy, that we all have different roles to play on the team, but at a human level, we are all equal. So about, 50, it took us, I must say, it took about 12 or 15 years for these concepts to really get ingrained in the minds of the staff, you know, everybody. And uh, I can tell you when we thought we've, you know, uh, the job done, mission accomplished was one time when we went to India and every time we went, we would organize a picnic. We'd have four or 500 people in one city and we'd all go out on a picnic, we'd play games and whatnot. And usually people would, you know, come around asking, have you had lunch? Have you had lunch to Margaret and me? But this last time, they didn't even bother to ask us. Now they were not being inhospitable, but just they, they shed their hierarchy, okay? And we were just one of them. So we said, okay, mission accomplished. And so after that, we started thinking, okay, what can we do to promote these concepts or these values among a broader, uh, you know, a group of people, especially the young. Now we started this much before 2016, but you can imagine every passing day since 2016, we just keep saying or thinking, my gosh, how relevant are these values? Even more relevant today. And as we bring our country back, to a semblance of what it has been and should be, these are the values which will help us get there. So I really want to, uh, and so, so what we did was we said, okay, <clears throat> we are going to select young people who have demonstrated through some examples in their life, even though you are young, all of you have had some experience where one of these values were challenged. And I can tell you stories that we've read from each and every one of you that gives us goosebumps because of the way you handled yourself when these values were challenged. And so our hope is to find young people like you who have demonstrated a commitment to these values. And we hope that with our support, and our community as we meet and talk and you know, uh, discuss these topics, that you will take these beyond your membership in the, uh, in the scholarship and take it out in the real world and really make a difference. So thank you for uh, joining and thank you for being who you are. I just hope you continue doing uh, living the kind of life that we as Americans should, I mean, we as humans actually, should be living.
So with that, let me um, ask Doug. Doug. Doug has been an amazing uh, partner with us right from the time when we imagined what this scholarship could be. Oh, I should share a few uh, kind of uh, interesting anecdotes from that journey, okay? So as you probably know, university scholarships are typically based on either need or scholarly excellence, you know? And what we said was that people who pursue values come from a very broad spectrum. They don't have to be excellent scholars and they don't have to have tremendous need. They can be people who are affluent, who are also pursuing values and they can be people with not so strong scholarly records, but who are also trying to live a good life. And so we had a few back and forths with the University of Michigan State, Doug, you'll remember, where when we got a draft back of our proposed agreement, we would find a paragraph inserted either on academic excellence or on financial need. And we would then go back and say, you know, please let's take these out because let's stay focused on integrity, dignity, and excellence. And so that was an interesting kind of a, we are kind of juxtaposition in the university environment and trying to do something quite different. Okay, with that, Doug, would you please share your thoughts? He has been a champion. He's been a sponsor from the very beginning and the amount of, uh, what should I say, heart and soul he puts into mentoring the scholars at Michigan State is absolutely amazing. We pulled him out of retirement, but boy, I tell you, he's doing more out of retirement than he probably did when he was working full time. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for those uh, those kind words, Shashi. Um, we we have had some wonderful inter interchanges uh, over the years that have really helped um, open my eyes and helped clarify for me um, what you and Margaret really are focused on trying to accomplish with this scholarship. And it's been it's been, as far as I'm concerned, a great relationship. Uh, let me start. I want I want to be very brief um, in thanking the University of Michigan. Thank you to uh, you, Dean Solomon, uh, to Chris, to Rhonda, to Anne, for taking the time to set this up. Um, I know right. it wasn't our ideal kind of way to have our, our fall meeting that um, we, we would like to have been together face to face, but you have done a really impressive job. And Chris has got to know, I even have the U of M background in, so um, you know, there's, there's, there's got to be something to say to that. So thank, <laughs> thank you again for all the work you did. Um, I, I, I want to just a few comments maybe to expand a little bit on um, what Shashi said from my perspective. Over the years, I've, I've either worked with or helped Jennifer establish a number of scholarships um, at Michigan State University. And um, what they all seem to have in common, uh, or many of them, is the fact that the scholarship is designated to someone with, in a particular major or with a particular disciplinary interest. Or the scholarship wants a student to develop certain skills or abilities like leadership. Much less of the time do they seem to have in common some of those things that really students need to develop to establish a foundation that allows them to develop the values that they need to use in order to be strong um, uh, advocates within their profession or strong leaders. And several years ago, um, when uh, Shashi and Margaret came along and set up this scholarship, it was somewhat unique amongst the many that I have, I have been involved in. The fact that what they wanted was for students to really establish a set of core values, a foundation on which to build a career. Um, we all know that those careers start in one place and move in many, many directions. But what doesn't change over these times, and, and in fact only gets stronger, is the values that they use to make the, the hard decisions, to work with other people to solve the complex problems to look at our, the challenges that we're facing now and use the values of excellence, use the values of human dignity, use the value of integrity to make 
good, informed, and evidence-based decisions. So I think um, uh, Michigan State, and I, and I know that U of M owes a great deal uh, of gratitude to Shashi and Margaret for um, helping us establish this kind of a scholarship. And I can tell them honestly that I work with one other scholarship that's been around for a long time. Um, and I love the other scholarship, but I have taken from this one the things that they have helped us understand and begin to insert some of them in that other as I work with the student and try to mentor them to be the best that they can be. So thank you very much. And I'm glad we could all be together this evening. Thank you, Doug. Really, really appreciate you being here and your comments. And um, we'll echo for U of M what you said about the leadership that's, that's indicated uh, in the structure of this scholarship. I talk about it to people all the time. Um, right now, we're going to go into breakout rooms. Uh, my colleague, Ann Leffler, is getting really good at this. And we have a planned structure for a couple of things to talk about, but I encourage you just to use the time to get to know each other. Margaret and Shashi have the trickiest thing because they're going to switch rooms so they get a chance to meet more people. And I think we know how we're doing that. Ann's going to send you a little message that says, leave the breakout room and you're gonna leave the breakout room and then she's gonna move you someplace else like it's a, you know, we're beaming up on Star Trek. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Thanks to all of you. And Anne, if you're, if you're ready to do it, go ahead and put us in breakout rooms. Hi everyone, welcome back. It's great to see you back. I, we had fantastic discussion in our room and um, I really wanna thank the students for being so open and, and, uh, and, just share my admiration that you know so much about what you're going to do to change the world. It's really, it's really pretty impressive. Um, I want to turn it over now back to Margaret and Shashi to, um, oh, actually, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I missed a step. We have the privilege to see um, part of a video that I, I, I think you'll find remarkable. Amani Ma is one of our Rackham graduate students who is a choreographer and she has the challenge of teaching um, West African dance in this COVID era. And she offered to share with us um, a video, a snippet of a video, and I will send you following this, a link to the entire one so that you can watch it. But um, Rhonda, if you're ready, um, if you can get that queued up to the beginning. And Imani, do you wanna tell us a little bit about um, what we're about to see? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you all for your time and allowing me to present work. So last year uh, was my first year as an MFA student at, in the dance program of Rackham. Um, and I'm also known as the first West first teacher to come in and teach West African dance in the history of U of M. And so that has been a real honor and privilege. And basically what we've been doing with my class we have been creating a holistic learning environment where we have been breaking down racism, stereotypes, things, and the things that the baggage that people come in with that is projected on them due to the programming of this world. We are able to revisit African tradition to clear that space, to create a holistic learning environment, to create a community, to create love, and then that fosters in on our own things and sharing that energy with others and inviting them to come back and join this circle. So this documentary, you'll see what we do. It's it's just not me, it's like a whole team of people, but we've been making very beautiful innovations and I feel like it is so in alignment with the Gupta values and I just am so honored to be here. And to share it. So, Fantastic. Rhonda, when you're ready, go ahead and, and share your screen. And then you guys, we're just watching the, the very beginning and then we, I will send you the link. No, can we dance today, please? <laughs>
Thus far in my career, I have grown a deeper appreciation and passion for traditional African culture, dance, music, and techniques. For the last 12 years, I have witnessed how prevailing and life-changing dance can be when you open your mind, body, and spirit to the healing aspects of the thing. Currently, I have found myself wanting to know more about how the foundation and roots of African movement show up and coexist in modern dance practices today. As a multidisciplinary artist who is talented in many areas such as dance, drum, choreography, film, and photography, I understand the importance of research through development and how this informs one's evolution. At the university level, and prior to shifting my focus to African dance, I found myself in dance spaces often being the only African American student present in class. There were countless occasions where I found myself unsatisfied because there was limited access to teachers who incorporated the African aesthetic into their curriculum and pedagogy. Classical European dance forms and practices were highly favored over anything that was considered to be African related. This left me feeling oppressed and subjugated in dominantly white spaces. I began to question why large institutions were avoiding the critical conversations that needed to be addressed about the significance, importance, and influence that African culture has had in the realm of dance and ultimately the world. As an innovative new generation dance artist, I am inspired by interdisciplinary arts and my concentrations in the study of ancient African civilizations, traditional West African dance, modern dance, spoken word, photography, videography, and African drumming. Through a practice of fusing my concentrations together, I feel that I have the spirited responsibility to create work and films that are grounded in the roots of African values, principles, and ideologies. I am curious to see how this work will impact others, and I am confident that this film will be beneficial for my students, black dancing bodies that are navigating through white spaces, colleagues from U of M and other universities, and my peers in the professional field of dance. My purpose for this film is to cultivate, create, enrich, and inspire through dance and dance making. Thank you. Thank you, Imani. It, it was so great to see that. And, and I encourage all of you, I'm, I'm going to send the link right as soon as we're done because it's really a phenomenal film. And I think, I know I'm personally so moved to see people dancing and moving together in a space again, and, and the work just looks beautiful. Thank you for sharing it with us. We're, we, I feel very privileged. Um, now I'm going to turn it back over to Shashi and Margaret to say their goodbyes. and. Um, and then we'll leave each other, but hopefully we'll be again, be together again soon. Shashi, thank Margaret. Thank, thank you, Chris. We really want to appreciate you taking all the time and effort to, to get us together and have this well-orchestrated Zoom video. I have to say, this is probably one of the most technologically advanced Zooms that I've been on and the breakouts work perfectly. So congratulations. Um, and it's been great to see everybody, see some of our existing scholars and the new scholars and get to meet you and talk about our, our subjects of hope for the future. It, it gives me a, a real uplift going forward for the into the weekend. Um, so it, it's been great to get together. We really are looking forward to seeing everybody in person, maybe next April if we're really lucky, but if not, then maybe in the fall, because that's that's always so great to, to get together. And um, so we look forward to that. And it's, it's been wonderful seeing everybody and Doug and Jennifer, Mike Solomon, I guess Mike's probably not with us in, here, but uh, anyway, thank all of you for being here and thank you, Chris, for, for hosting. Thanks to all of you and um, look in your email for the link to the rest of the video and um, everybody have a great weekend and stay well. Okay.